Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 10 on basic statistics. In this lecture, we are going to discuss how to compute different measures of variability or measures of dispersion. So the first measure of dispersion we will discuss is range. And this is the simplest measure of dispersion. We have ready-made formula for the range. To find out range of any data, we have to take difference of, difference of largest value and smallest value of the data. So range is defined as range equal to largest value minus smallest value. Range is the simplest measure of dispersion and it, it is based on extreme observations that is highest observation and smallest observation. Second measure of dispersion is interquartile range. Interquartile range is defined as difference of third and first quartile that is interquartile range equal to Q3 minus Q1. And as we know that quartiles divide the data into four equal parts and we can see suppose this is first quartile this is third quartile then this difference is nothing but interquartile range therefore interquartile range is the amount of variation in the middle half of the data as we can see here amount of dispersion in the middle half of the data is described by interquartile range so we can be asked to find out interquartile range and we will remember this formula interquartile range equal to third quartile minus first quartile and we have discussed in earlier lectures that how to find out quartiles and uh, percentiles so as we know q1 is nothing but 25th percentile and q3 is nothing but 75th percentile and we know how to find out these percentiles of given data so we remember these two formulas range is difference of smallest and largest values and interquartile range is difference of third and first quartile with this in mind we try to understand this example here we are given a sample with these data values 27 25 20 15 30 34 28 and 25 and we are asked to compute range and interquartile range to find out range we have to identify what is the largest and smallest value of the given data so we can observe that 34 is the largest value and 15 is the smallest value so difference of 34 and 15 is 19 therefore range of this data is 19. Now for interquartile range we have to find out Q3 and Q1 that is third and first quartile and we know that this Q1 is nothing but 25th percentile and Q3 is nothing but 75th percentile. So first we find out 25th percentile then we find out 75th percentile and their difference will give us interquartile range. So here we have written interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. To find the quartiles, first we have to arrange the data in ascending order. So this data is not in ascending or descending order. So first we are arranging this data in ascending order, starting with smallest value which is 15. Then we have 20. After that, we will write down 25, which is 2 times, then 28, no, then 27, and then 28, and then 30 and 34. So, in this way, I have arranged given data in ascending order, and we count what is the number of data values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, number of data values or number of observations are n equal to 8. Now we recall that to find out pth percentile first we will find out index i which is given by p into n divided by 100. So there are two possibilities for this index i either it is an integer or it is not an integer. 
so if it is not an integer then we round up whatever number we obtain to next integer and uh, uh, we find out observation at that position and that will be the given percentile pth percentile now if i is not an integer uh, we find out the observations at ith and i if i is an integer we find out the observations at i and i plus 1th position and average of those two observations will be equal to pth percentile so with this in mind we first find 25th percentile which is our first quartile for 25th percentile value of p is 25 here total number of data values are 8 that is n is 8 so i will be equal to p into n divided by 100 p is 25 n is 8 divided by 100 so we have i equal to 2 and this is an integer so i plus 1 will be equal to 3 i equal to 2 which is an integer and i plus 1 is 3 so our 25th percentile will be equal to average of second and third observation so we identify uh, what are the observations at second and third position this is position number 2 this is position number 3 so second observation is 20 third observation is 25 and average of these two will be 25th percentile so 25th percentile equal to average of second observation and third observation that is 20 plus 25 divided by 2 that is 45 divided by 2 which is equal to 22.5 so first quartile is 22.5 similarly for third quartile we know that q3 is 75th percentile so we take p equal to 75 first we identify what is index i i equal to p into n divided by 100 so p is 75 n is 8 after doing calculations we again obtain that index i is an integer so we find out i plus 1 which is 7 so average of 6th and 7th observations will be equal to 75th percentile or q3 so again we identify what are the observations at number 6 and 7th position so this is first observation second third fourth fifth sixth and seventh so we have to consider average of 28 and 30 to find out q3 or 75th percentile so here we have written i equal to 6 which, in a, which is an integer therefore i plus 1 is 7 and 75th percentile will be equal to 6th observation plus 7th observation divided by 2 6th observation is 28 7th observation is 30 and average is 29 so third quartile is 29 now interquartile range is difference of third and first quartile third quartile is 29 first quartile is 22.5 therefore interquartile range is 6.5 so to find out interquartile range we must be familiar with the method of finding percentiles so again we repeat to find out pth percentile uh, we have to first find out index i given by i equal to p into n divided by 100 now if this i is not an integer then we find out the next integer which is just greater than i suppose i equal to say 30.7 then the integer which is just greater than i is 31 so observation at 31th position will be pth percentile if i is an integer then observation at position i and i plus 1 we have to find out and average of ith observation and i plus 1th observation will be equal to pth percentile and to find out q1 and q3 we have to find out 25th and 75th percentile 
नेक्स्ट मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्सन इज क्वार्टाइल डेविएशन अनदर नेम इज सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज सो वाई इट इज सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज सो वी नो दैट इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज इज डिफरेंस ऑफ क्यू थ्री एंड क्यू वन एंड इफ यू टेक हाफ ऑफ दिस इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज देन वी विल हैव क्वार्टाइल डेविएशन और सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज सो वन हाफ टाइम्स इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज विल बी इक्वल टू क्वार्टाइल डेविएशन सम ऑथर्स आर डिनोटिंग इट बाई क्यू सम ऑथर्स यूज दिस नोटेशन ऑल्सो क्यू सफिक्स डी फॉर क्वार्टाइल डेविएशन सो क्वार्टाइल डेविएशन इज नथिंग बट क्यू थ्री माइनस क्यू वन डिवाइडेड बाई टू और हाफ ऑफ द इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज देर फॉर इट इज नोन एज सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज ऑल्सो क्वार्टाइल डिविएशन और सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज इज गिवन बाय क्यू और वी कैन यूज क्यू सफिक्स डी ऑल्सो सो इट इज गिवन बाय क्यू इक्वल टू वन हाफ टाइम्स क्यू थ्री माइनस क्यू वन और वन हाफ टाइम्स इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज और हाफ ऑफ द इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज इज नथिंग बट क्वार्टाइल डिविएशन और सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज सो वी कैन फाइंड आउट सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज फॉर दिस प्रॉब्लम simply by dividing 6.5 by 2 so quartile deviation for that example is 1/2 times q3 minus q1 q3 minus q1 is 6.5 so we obtain 3.25 as quartile deviation for this problem so in this way we can obtain this uh, three measures of dispersion range इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज वी हैव डिस्कस दिस थ्री मेजर्स हाउ टू कॉम्प्यूट दिस थ्री मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्पर्सन एंड थर्ड वन इज क्वार्टाइल डिविएशन और सेमी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज सो वी विल रिमेंबर द मैथड ऑफ कॉम्प्यूटिंग दिस थ्री मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्पर्सन एंड इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल कंटिन्यू विथ मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्पर्सन So I hope you like this lecture thank you very much